Oh shit, yeah. This is hot. Uh, yeah. Welcome to my craziest Chernobyl video ever. Oh, wow. This is pure gamma. Well, uh, we've met, uh, no, we're not maxing my meter, but. Well, if you're getting closer to it. Yeah, now we're really super power. Yeah. <laughs> the most radioactive thing ever, and it's guarded by radioactive I'm getting ants. 20 millirem per hour, yeah. 15 millirem per hour. Yeah, it's, it's around here. 6 millisievert power. Gloves time, even for me. Uh, I think probably a good idea to put the Gamma Scout into a uh, plastic bag as well. So I can even put it on the ground. And then just dispose of the bag. Take an action shot. Go for so, it. Yeah. Getting to this treasure is gonna be tough, but it's gonna be worth it. Okay, everything is beeping. I think that's the Gamma Sapiens that is beeping. Yeah, it says overflow. <laughs> I'm gonna put off the sound because it just uh, that's useless. Ah no! Oh. You can see the radioactive ants all over me, ready to defend the nest. And soon enough, it's time for my first ant bite. Ah, oh, goddamn ants. Do you see that? One of them crawled into my glove and just bit me and I squished the it. ants definitely aren't affected by the radiation. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it should be probably around here or something. But I must find it no matter the cost. Maybe this owl oh, got me in the bag. <laughs> That's horrible, man. These ants are really bad. <laughs> it has 8 millisieverts per hour. And now there's ants all over the thing. <laughs> That's crazy. Two millisieverts per hour as well. That's the Gamma Sapiens, the device I previously demonstrated in another video. Oh, I not seen this one. And my tactical dosimeter. More or less. 56, 57 C. <laughs> That's accumulating those quickly. That's cheating, but... <laughs> but okay, back to digging up the thing. The usual method in locating a hot particle. Dig up a part of the soil, see if it's hotter than the rest. And if it's not, keep digging. If it is, then a fuel fragment is inside. And just keep further se separating it until you'll find your desired particle. Hi, ends. Yeah, this is here. Yeah. Okay, water. Water, water, water. So, seems like we located the piece of soil that contains it, moving it further away from the rest of the contaminated radioactive ant pile. There's one of them. And uh, eventually, you will find a beautiful particle. And as opposed to the uh, sand grain sized particles that I previously found, this is rather easy to spot with the naked eye. Holy shit, it's huge. Yeah. Don't put it on there, just kill it. Yeah, that's maxing out the meter. That's the fuel particle. Yay! Got it! <laughs> so, um, I can I can take off one glove, that's a good idea, so I can handle the fragment. But also the, the things. Like that. Oh, the gamma scout, yeah? Thank you, scout, I'm just gonna yeah. try it out. Yeah. So, you still videoing that? Yeah. Great. <laughs> Let's try and see what the gamma scale says. Anyway. Oh, ants. Right, I should have sufficient superpower, so let's move away from the ants. This little thing. And the... Uh... <laughs> If, if this wall is a full body dose, I mean, of course, the inverse square law applies and everything. Yes. But if, if this was a full body dose, you would be sick in two hours. 100, 100. So the others were taking some final photos of me. I just suspected me to be dead by the evening. I'm getting like delayed reaction ants. Let me show you a photo. This is the last one we don't need. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And Taras, the guy from Echo Test, was keeping his distance 
being too scared of all that radiation because he could pick it up from all the way over there. So it took some good convincing to get him to come over here, but uh, well, we get some interesting readings. There are rumors that the device actually picks up a false high reading of neutrons if there is an overload with a gamma dose reading, but well, neutrons could still be present there, so um, this is actually quite a cool device that I would love to own at some point, but I think it costs like the price of a small car or something. Too bad we didn't toy with it more and get spectral readings and all, but well, I guess you can't blame a marketing guy for being scared of that radiation. So you can try the, uh, the uh, 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 Gamma Sapiens? Yeah, Sapiens, <laughs> don't don't you want to see a beautiful device uh, with a good reading? Well, it was just maxed out anyway. So we took that beautiful piece to a safe location without ants or anything around. And now I'm measuring it with a beta, alpha beta probe on the outer mass, which just measures ink impulses per second. But uh, you can see it just quickly maxes out at over 10 kilo counts per second, so that's over 10,000 counts per second. I'm getting close to the particle, just in that glove. So let's put on the high dose rate probe again, which is this one, high dose rate gamma only probe. closer. 115 millimeters per hour on a gamma only probe. Yeah, that's definitely high dose range. Let's try the other detectors. And here's yet another device I will review shortly. It's the Radio Scan 501 from a Moscow based company. But, um, well, for this, it is maxing out as well, same as most of the other meters. So, uh, let's take a closer look at that device later on. I put my radiation detector watch next to the fuel fragment as well, but I was just showing a reading of high, so maxed out as well. So, um, now here's the Gamma Scout as well, just for fun. Readings are in milliram, be advised. And of course, it's saying overflow. But now, let's do something cool and place an old camera, a compact camera on top of it. And there you can see all these beautiful flashes of gamma radiation and probably partly high energy beta radiation as well striking the detector of the camera. It looks like in these old fashioned inside churnable footages. Quite beautiful, isn't it? Let's slow down the video so we can witness those strikes on the CCD more properly. Well, there goes another camera. But luckily, compact cameras are not too expensive anymore. So it has been replaced. And, uh, well, this old one will be used for further crazy experiments such as this one. But there's another thing I need to do. I'm gonna perform a street test of this big fuel fragment to confirm if it's actually uh, a fuel fragment or if it's actually a piece of the graphite that was surrounding the fuel. So uh, let's do that. And quite a distance to the particle, but still already reading 4 millisievert per hour. Okay, so let us extract the particle from the glove. Now, what we want to do is uh, just streak it over here a little bit. And you can see yeah, it comes off very easily. Now uranium fuel will be very hard, so it would be very hard to perform a streak test, it would not really rub off that easily, I was just giving it a very small push. So this is most likely a piece of graphite actually, and not the reactor fuel, because it's very easy, you just go like this and it draws a line. On second thought, uh, spent fuel may actually lose the integrity that the original structure, that the pure uranium has, as more and more of it gets converted into the different fission isotopes, so in theory, I don't know, but in theory spent fuel might just be as soft as, for example, graphite. But, um, well, the streaks on this marble plate pretty much seem to resemble graphite. But as I said, I'm not 100% sure about this. I just suspect that it should be graphite in theory. And by the way, be very, very careful about streak tests of radioactive material such as this. The contamination risk is insane. Imagine just an ant crawling all over you and uh, 
as an impulse, you just, I don't know, shake it off or swipe it with your hand and swipe it off your clothes and everything becomes contaminated, seriously. So, again, be very careful if you do strict tests of, for example, your uranium minerals. And, well, there's one thing left that needs to be done, and that is, we need to look at the gamma spectrum, of course. So, uh, what you can see here is that big prominent cesium-137 peak at uh, 662 kV, which is pretty much expected because it's in everything fission-related. But you can also see some smaller peaks. And if we actually switch the scale to a uh, logarithmic view, you can just make out what they are. You can see some americium-241, some europium-154, which is actually a uh, fission isotope as well. And you can see that europium-154 actually has multiple gamma energies. They're pretty much all present. Um, and uh, they're in the, in the proper ratios as well. So europium-154 as well as the characteristic cesium-137 are uh, actually confirmed. But the sodium peak on the right, the sodium-22 peak, I'm not too sure about the half-life. It's just uh, over two years or something. Uh, it's quite unlikely to be in there, but... Um, well, I don't, I don't really know about this one. Here is a closer look at a low energy end, so everything that is left, basically, or below the actual energy of cesium-137, which is again 662 kV. And you can see the americium-241 peak, one of the europium peaks, and then you actually see a beautiful Compton continuum with a Compton peak and a Compton valley, that will lead to this wonderful uh, big cesium-137 peak. Um, yeah, and if you look to the right of the spectrum again, so after the cesium-137, you see the different europium peaks that are also associated with the same isotope, europium-154, which just happens to have multiple gamma energies, the probably misidentified sodium-22 peak, and, well, just uh, all in all, this large piece of probably reactor graphite just contains the same stuff as the small sand grain sized one that I found and analyzed before so nothing too much new here but yeah I hope you still enjoyed to see me digging around in radioactive ants and by the way I'm still waiting for my superpowers <laughs>